Hi, I'm Sarah Cox. And I'm Mark Westcott. Welcome to The Power of Great Questions. Today we have the real privilege of interviewing Karen Phillips from Karen Phillips Corporate Communications here on the Gold Coast in Queensland. Welcome, Karen. Lovely to be here. Thanks for having me. Great to, great to see you again. And uh, Karen, you've got a very successful business. You've been in corporate communications. You've been running the early rises for a number of years. And uh, in fact, you, you, I could say you're an icon on the Gold Coast. So much so that you're in all the Gold Coast magazines all the time. You're really a celebrity, aren't you? Well, I'm not <laughs> sure about that, actually, about a celebrity. You know, Pamela Anderson and I, we've got kind of the fair hair in common. That's where it stops. <laughs> But look, yeah, we've done a lot of work across the Gold Coast and, and probably very quietly so across Australia and overseas as well. So, But we're really proud to be based on the Gold Coast and have our, our global headquarters here. It's terrific. No, fantastic. Karen, as you uh, know, the, the series we're, we're recording here is The Power of Great Questions. And, and the thesis of what we're going through is that it's much better to ask someone a question and to elicit a response that way than it is to, to tell them what they need to, uh, to do or the action that they should take. How do you feel about that? Well, I guess our brand is corporate communication. So uh, even just having that word all those years ago when I decided to launch my own business at the age of 29, I always felt then that communications was the key to any organisation and it's not just about the marketing, it wasn't about the, the PR words then or the collaboration as we like to call it now. It was actually about how you communicate both personally and you know through the internet, in every form of communication, how do you do that effectively? So the answer is, uh, you know, we have two of these and one of these, and how do we actually interact with those around us, from family, friends, of course, colleagues, uh, our bosses, our employees, and very importantly, our prospective clients, our current clients and customers, and uh, the wider world now as we've become so much more global. Absolutely. So Karen, today we're asking for three most important questions and can you share those with us, what you've come up with, what's most important to you as questions to ask other people and yourself? And myself. Well, I probably keep my own personal questions private. <laughs> Being a female, we run at about 50,000 thoughts a day. So in actual fact, many of those are questions and uh, very rarely are they good enough answers because we tend to find we ask the same questions over and over. So if we hone that down into what's critical and what's most important, and I think uh, the very idea of what you're creating here is so important for people to understand in their own personal life and their own business because the value of the question. So let's talk about, you know, what would be really good to ask someone? And that would be, what is it that you're wanting to truly achieve? And I think that's so important because we say, how are you? What are you doing? What have you been up to? And before you know, we find that we spend a large amount of time in what I call, not useless chatter, but noise, or what we now like to call static in the background. And when we leave, what do we remember about that conversation? What do we remember about that phone call or that interaction online? So I think it's really important to certainly not jump in at the first point, but a clear question you should always be thinking of, what is the value for that person? What are they really hoping to achieve from the situation, from their sales objectives, from bringing on a new member of staff, for actually going online, for integrating their businesses, from collaboration with other organisations? What are they really hoping to achieve? Not what are they doing, but what are they hoping to achieve? Okay, that's your first one. And a great, <laughs> that's and my first one. That's a great, that's a great question all by itself. I'm so glad you said that was good. <laughs> that was good. No, that, that was a great question. So we'll let you go through all three and then I've, I've got a, a key where I'd like to then bring you back and say, well, okay, how have you used those in real life and where have, um, uh, what are some examples, I guess, where you've asked those questions and you've seen the results of the power that those questions or the answers to those questions have, uh, have uncovered? Look, absolutely, and I think that, you know, one thing we need to think about now in this modern day and age where we're busier than ever before, we're more connected now than ever before, and yet we are so much less connected. As we find that the platforms change and grow and we talk about think local, act globally, you know, or act locally, think globally, whatever it happens to be, is that we need to think about and, and narrow down to who really is your audience? Who are you really trying to reach out? to grow your business, to market to. And people often say to me, you know, it's everyone, Karen. I want to talk to everyone. I say, no, actually you don't. There is so much noise out there. How do you actually narrow down and find those customers? And when you ask people that, that very simple question, who really are your customers and who do you want your customer to be? 
Because the customer you have today may not be the very customer that you're aiming on having or the client in six or 12 months time because the world is moving so quickly with the change of technology, the change of integration of communication. So looking to the future, not only who are your customers now, but who do you want them to be? And then how do you, you build or mold your customers to be the types of people that you want to deal and work with? Really important and we don't ask ourselves that question enough. Interesting because certainly um, what they say, and I, I use what they say in the States because it rhymes better, but in America they say if you want to get rich you find a niche, whereas niche doesn't quite work the same way. No, it doesn't, doesn't. <laughs> so, That's what so, niche means. Niche and niche. <laughs> niche. Rhymes with niche, but I'm not sure <laughs> that works that one. No, we don't want to use that one. But, but it's very true. In fact, I, I'm a great believer that the, the more narrow uh, you can make more your focus, and the more mm. r laser focus very, very specific. You can make your target audience the more successful you're going to be so so great point karen and, and the third one and yeah. i think the third one really is why are you doing this you know often we're so busy in our organization we've been in it for a long long time when we sit down and ask that very question why are you actually doing this what is your what are you hoping to achieve what is the importance of or the relevance in actual fact of why you're doing this and and generally it's not always about money. I mean, we can ask, how do you monetize this? How do you grow this great idea? I mean, there are more ideas out there in the common marketplace than at any other time in history. And people say, how do you monetize it? How do you grow this into a business or develop it further? I really ask that's very, very simple, but very deep and, and multi-level question of why are you actually doing it? Mm -hmm. And when you ask, is it back to you making money for my family? Is it actually to, I want to make a difference in the world? Or I see the importance of this in my city or in Australia? Or I feel there's a need in the marketplace for this now into the future that we can grow and develop this into a workable business? Or I want to create a succession plan and be able to sell it off and, and retire at the age of 40. So why are you actually doing it? Simple, very effective. Okay. And why is it what, what you do? Why, why do you do that? <laughs> Well, it's a good question actually, I'm glad you asked me that. <laughs> It'll be one you're asking forever more now, but why do I do it? I think it's great joy and, and certainly there's passion in what I do, but fulfilling my purpose. And I think that from where we look at in our organisation is you get one life. About 20 years ago I became very involved in the women's market with early risers, our women's breakfast. From there it's led on to speaking around Australia and in fact around the world, particularly with a big focus on you know, half the economy, the female economy. And what I've really seen and, and learned over the years in working in that industry in the field is that women particularly need nurturing and they need self-awareness and self-acceptance. So as part of that, the joy that we have in the work that we do is focus primarily on the women's market, how they value themselves, and, and in doing that we actually launched uh, three years ago now, the Gold Coast Women in Business Awards. Uh, it's become the Business Awards of Australia for women, and now we've launched the Women in Business Awards for the Downs and also for Brisbane, and we will continue to move this out throughout regions in Australia. So why do we do this type of work, or me at the helm in particular? I find great value and warmth and joy in seeing others succeed and others realising their full potential. And I think that, you know, we all have our different reasons. On some days you tear your hair out, of course you do. But primarily, what's the, the basic joy that I get? What's my purpose? And that seeing others fulfil their dreams uh, gives me great warmth in my heart. Okay. Great. Karen, uh, you've been involved, as I've known you for many years, you've been involved in the early days, the early part of your life, with, uh, which wasn't that long ago, with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> with Rotary and the, the Young Rotarians group, I forget what that was called, but uh, certainly with some of the colleagues we, we both know. Um, and, and obviously, back in those days, there would have been some, some questions thrown at you that really shaped who you are today, questions that were asked of you that, that really made you into the person you are today. What were the questions that were asked of you that's made you the Karen Phillips that you've become today? I think one of the questions that was asked when I was really young as I was uh, working as a journalist for a newspaper and my editor said to me, uh, you're not a very good speller, why is it that you want to do journalism? And, you know, it sounds like a, an interesting question and now when there are computers, which there weren't and it wasn't that long ago, uh, there weren't computers and there certainly weren't uh, the opportunities to look it up in the thesaurus, I should say, online. You actually had to delve into the book, which I never understood if you didn't know how to spell it. How can you even look it up? It drove me insane and my editor even more so. He said to me, why is it you want to be a journalist? And I sat down and had to really think about what it was the value of journalism and what came to me after finishing my cadetship, which is kind of like an apprenticeship for journalists, is that I came to the realisation that 
Although writing on paper connected me with people, I couldn't actually see or feel their response. And so that very one simple question led me to the belief that I needed to do something where I was communicating one-on-one -on -one or, or one-to-many, where I could actually see and feel the emotions and the change and the joy and be able to actually view that and watch it as it enveloped and developed as time went on. And so from there, it gave me the realisation that while I love journalism and a great background and a, and a great launching pad, that it wasn't where I needed to be. Uh, as hard as it was to accept at that particular point in time, it had me realise that there was a different path or an extension, really, of the initial path I'd taken. And I think sometimes it's those hard questions of why are you doing this when you have someone standing over you saying, you know, do you really want to do journalism? And you think, well, yes, I do. And then you ask that question, why am I doing and you realise that maybe it's not exactly what you thought it would be and maybe it's not the exact answer you thought right from the go, the get-go that you thought you'd be giving. And that changed my life forever and you know, I'm so glad he asked that question because it changed who I became and the depth in which I looked at myself and my career path and moved me to another place. And, and part of those youth growth programs are a really big part of that as well being involved with Rochi on a global basis and now I go back and train and teach in fact every single year and uh, I've got to the point now where I kind of think I'm older than some of their parents but it doesn't matter because the actual ideas and the thoughts and the processes are exactly the same who do you want to be why are you doing it and what value are you bringing and I think hearing those words all those years ago to me at the age of 20 changed my life path at the same time as uh, my editor said that to me, I kind of thought, you know, what is it that I really want to do? How do I want to ignite my life and those others around me? And so those Rotary Youth Leadership Programs uh, certainly had a change in my life and, and dozens, if not hundreds and thousands of other young people around, which is, you know, why they do these programs. It's terrific. No, fantastic. I'm, I'm just going to say here, it's, um, it's interesting. You've raised a really good point, Karen, and that is, you know, in your life, uh, somebody asked you a question and it changed your mm -hmm. life, didn't it? So, you, you know, one question changed your life. Yeah. And what I find all the time is that if uh, if you ask everybody, mm -hmm. there's been one person in their life that's asked a question, that's made them stop, that's made them think, and it's absolutely changed the direction of where they were heading, what they were doing, mm -hmm. or, or, or they discovered something about themselves that they'd never discovered before. And that's why I have such great um, belief in what it is that we're doing and putting together this program, because if we can help uh, ask people what their great questions are and then talk about them on this program and one of, just one, one of the questions that someone asks, someone listening to this or reading this, uh, these articles, reads that question and ask, asks it of themselves and it changed their lives and then we've done a great thing because most people have someone who's been a mentor in their life that's, that's asked them a great question. And or an aggravator. Yeah, <laughs> and right. I think, you know, we, we see those, right. they're, they're mentors in, uh, in wolf's clothing, really, but sometimes they are the aggravator. Sometimes it is that editor standing there shouting. Sometimes it's that old-fashioned boss. Is this what you really want to do? And certainly in years gone by, we had that in the workplace. Now it's changed because we're so nurturing and caring of our young folk. And as they come up, you know, we, we think the world is their oyster and we allow them to discover and express themselves in their own way. So the workplace has changed and how we actually ask those questions and how we really pull it out of them is to get the answer that not we want to hear, but that they need to find, and that's critical. Mm. Mm. Now, Karen, I, I do want to show off your book. Uh, oh, <laughs> thank Women, you. Women's Words, and uh, a, great, a great book. And you've interviewed some really impressive people here from Olivia Newton-John through to our past Prime Minister. Julia Gillard and many, many others. And I just want to ask, it must have been a great experience for you to have that communication with, with all those people because that's a relationship with each of the, I'm not sure how many people are in here, but, but a lot of women. But my, my question is, as you went through those interviews, what was the question that you used with them that really garnered the greatest interesting response from each and every person you interviewed? Well, I think that probably the most exciting or relevant question in actual fact is, is certainly within the book um, but probably more importantly was how the book came about and that is I had to step up and to make those cold calls and ask people if they'd be part of something that they had no idea about uh, they were speaking with someone they'd never heard of before and to actually give themselves and open their heart and I think that there lies the relevance is that sometimes it's us ourselves stepping up to go outside our own comfort zone to believe we can really tr truly do something that will make a difference. I've had the opportunity through mentoring and working with women around Australia for you know, a couple of decades 
And in seeing that, I'm always inspired by what women have to say and sharing of their journeys because it's sharing the stories where we learn the most, I find, and sharing from each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the most key influences that someone can provide to another human and that's to share of their heartfelt wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so I saw the opportunity to bring like-minded women, some very famous, 50 in fact, uh, some not so famous, but having really truly expressive and, and influencing lives in Australia. And so I had to step up and, and make that call to people like Dr. Fiona Wood, who created the plastic skin after mm. the Bali bombings here in That's Australia right. and, and in Bali, of course, and phoning her and saying, you don't know me, but this is my idea. And it really started with me saying to Olivia and John, who I didn't know at the time, here's my idea, this is what I'd like to do, will you come with me on the journey? And sometimes, in our lives, it doesn't matter if it's a book or it, it, it's starting a, a youth club or it's doing something with your family. Sometimes it's, it's actually stepping up and deciding to actually ask that question. And uh, in creating the book, probably one of the most interesting aspects was that I wanted to have it launched by the Governor General of Australia. And so I wrote her the letter, as you do, officially, and said, you know, would you be in my book? I'd love you to write on the back of my book and, you know, write that nice, um, this is the best book that was ever created, please buy 20,000 copies, something <laughs> like that on the back. And, uh, and then I thought, look, I'd ask her to launch the book as well. And while you're in for two questions, you may as well ask three, I always say. So could she do it on the 100th anniversary of International Women's Day? And preferably at her house, which was in Canberra at Government House at the time, opposed to my house. And uh, so I sent the letter off. But here's the thing, you ask that question and you always find an additional pathway. So I found not only myself of not knowing the Governor General, but I went to find those influencers who perhaps would be able to also press upon her the importance of this project for women across Australia. And uh, interesting I used to date Julie Gillard's partner, Tim Matheson. And uh, so I was happy to make that phone call and say, you owe me about 20,000 favours. Could you pop on down the road in Canberra and put a note in uh, the Governor General's letterbox and ask her, if she could endorse and support this book. And I also happen to have a friend in Brisbane who was best friends with the daughter of the Governor General. So I found different pathways and I think that when asking a question, if you don't get the answer you want, you find another way. And I think that's really important. So I thought I won't leave it to chance, I'll, I'll ask the Governor General as well as find these extra pathways. Um, the letter did come back from the Governor General and um, it was, she receives a, a lot of requests and we're not sure we'll come back to you within a timely manner. I received a phone call and the gentleman called, who was a captain of the Australian Army, and uh, he phoned to say, the Governor General has received your request, and as you can imagine, she receives a lot, of, a lot of requests as such. And you always hear that. When you're in sales, you think, hang on, I can hear a no coming on any moment. And I thought, right, well, what I'll do is I'll stand and put the phone by my ear and, and take this stance. So I, I create a little bit of weight around me. I create some kind of commanding voice. And I said, really? But none like mine. He said, in fact, Karen, that's true. And I thought, right, now you've got an inch, you have to take a mile in, in the old terms, of course. And uh, he said, the Governor General would love to be involved in your book, but however, she can't write on the back of a book. She's not allowed to, it's against uh, our policy. She can't write on the back of anything. And I thought, well, why didn't I read that on the internet? So you don't always have the answers you need to find the next question or to be able to ask correctly sometimes. So you have to make it up sometimes as you go, and we all have to do that in business. On our feet, decide the best course of action. And so I said, well, would she like to write somewhere else? And he said, well, in fact, she'd like the inside cover. Has that been taken? And I thought, Olivia Newton-John? Of course it hasn't been taken. She can have that. That's waiting just for the Governor General. So there I had her in the book. And once I had her in the book, then there was that opportunity to have her launch the book. And of course, not only launch the book, but in fact, believe it or not, on the 100th anniversary of International Women's Day. I sometimes think if you don't ask, you don't get it. And I could have had that as a dream forever and be telling this story now and saying one day I thought about asking the Governor General. But I did. I stepped out of my comfort zone, I went ahead, I tried different pathways and I was successful and now as they say in the old days, the, uh, the rest is history. But it helped launch the book, it helped position the book and it empowered other people to be in, want to be involved in the book and in fact we aim for 50 people in the book, we ended up with 51 but I kind of allowed her in because she was the Governor General. <laughs> so you know you never know where things will go but if you don't ask you don't get and if you don't look at new pathways um, if the answer is no well the answer is no but what if it was yes mm. and in fact for me it was. And so, well, I thought it might have been a no when Nathan called me, and in fact turned into a yes, and not only a yes, but a magnificent yes, with hundreds of people at the launch from all around Australia and done on a national platform. I couldn't have asked for more. But if I just left that as a dream and hadn't followed that thought in the shower and hadn't followed every pathway possible, it may never have happened. So what are you doing in your business each and every day that 
you can find another pathway to move you forward or you don't accept that that's a no. Uh, you actually look for another opportunity to take you forward and, and I think the book's a great example of that because who would have thought 10 years ago or five years ago that would have happened? But I pushed it, I worked on it, I prayed for it, but I certainly just didn't hope that it would happen. I moved forward in every direction I could to ensure in a positive way that it would. So ask and you will receive. That, that well, would be a phone Andy. call from Captain Nathan. <laughs> Captain Nathan. Nathan. Captain Nathan. No, not, okay. not Nathan, Captain Nathan. <laughs> Captain Nathan. But I think very importantly, yeah. look, the answer can be no. Yeah. And I think we've, we've heard that perhaps, you know, on stage or from other mentors over the past. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. Mm. It's no every single time because you never stepped up and asked the question. It, it might be no, but what if it was a yes? Yeah. Mine was a yes. And, uh, you know, and I think that's the journey of learning is that uh, sometimes you have to go out of your comfort zone, ask the difficult questions, but also see the opportunity for it to be a yes. Who knows well, what will happen? The interesting thing there, I think, was that uh, at every corner, you, had, you actually had another question, not another statement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every time someone would come up with a maybe or a no or whatever, you were ready with the next question. And uh, once again, just coming back and proving the point. And asking, the question. Yeah, asking another person. Yeah, asking well, well seeing, yeah. seeing that it's an opportunity. Yep. And I think that's it. Questions give us opportunities. They give us opportunities to learn more. And as we learn more and understand more, we're able to ask another valued question. Mm. So I think if we were all limited to 100 words a day, what would those words be? We would have to make sure that they were imperative, they were important, they were valuable. They added something to someone else. They connected us with that person or people we were dealing with or talking to or, or emailing. So if you narrow it down in that way and say, what can I ask that will gain value for them and value for me? And that changes the words we use and the way we speak. And I think connecting these two things, uh, particularly as women, sometimes we think the yabbering or the chatting gets us ahead. In actual fact, it's the valued questions that actually lead the person you're speaking with or dealing with to actually think, you know what, they're a very considered person. And up go you in the value scale. And next time they're dealing with you, connecting with you, communicating with you, they see you in a different light. And that's the key to great connections and great relationships. Well, asking the question is one thing and listening to the answer is the other. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I have to put my hand up. I'm a good butter in her. Uh, only because, well, number one, I'm, I'm female, I'm blonde, and I get really excited, as you can probably tell. So I'm like, oh, we're off and racing. We're going around the track. Let's share and ignite and, and talk. Uh, zipping it and actually listening effectively. And I think uh, one, of the, one of the things I learned is through Sue Middleton, who's one of the, the women in my book, she said, listen or speak to the ears that listen. So there's no use to speaking to voices, and you know this in an argument in your own home territory. If you're speaking and they're tuned out and they're not listening, you're not getting anywhere. It's wasted energy and vitality and, and annoyance at most times. So if you're going to be speaking with someone, ensure that the words you're using and the, the information you're sharing is of value, and then they will hear it more effectively. And vice versa, if you're asking the question or you're listening, what are the key elements? What are the takeaways? What are the learnings? Because the more you learn about someone, the more you've connected with them, the more valued you are, but most importantly, the more information you have on them. And the more information and understanding that you have on that person, the better the future connections are. I always say with business cards, when you head off and you've got a business card, it sounds so basic, but write three points on the back of it. Because if you lose it and in a week or two or 10 weeks time you find it, it takes you right back to that moment and that conversation. And there's nothing more valuable than when you write that email. Is, How did Johnny go in the, in the sports program last week? Did he do well in the athletics carnival you were chatting about? They think, wow, they actually listen. And immediately you've gone up 10% if we look at it in a scale. And I think that, you know, we're so busy now. We're so busy that we have little time. So how do we value add that time, cut out the, the noise and, uh, and reduce the friction and add value to that person? And that's through listening. Okay. And then if you were to go three years from now into the unknown, endless possibilities <laughs> <laughs> and look back at your life, um, yes. up, from that three years time, what would you have to achieve for you to be satisfied? I think it, that is an interesting question because what is, you know, what satisfies one person? Is it personally, is it you. culturally, <laughs> is, you know, is it all of us together? And I suppose if I'm looking back in, in three years time, I would say the Women in Business Awards of Australia, how they've been structured, how they've grown, how they change people's lives, and really local and uh, statewide and national economies, because it's not just about 
the value of the awards and the opportunity and the profiling, but it's very much about growing local economies and sustainability for local economies across Australia. So as I look back in three years, I know now in my heart the pathways we're creating now, the connections and collaborations we've enforced as we move forward are actually building a wonderful platform and foundation for those awards to grow and prosper. That will give me great joy, not just on a professional level, and for me that's really important, that it's not just professional, it's when I go home at night, I know that I've added value, and that should that day uh, I not wake up the next morning, that what I've created and the base and the foundation that I've provided will be able to be continued on by others. So for that, the succession plan is not just passing the financial opportunities on to family and, and those you're close to, but actually growing a better economy and, and better sustainable communities as we move forward. So, you know, that's my big love and, and one of my major purposes. Great. Great Karen, questions. Yeah, great questions. Great interview, Karen. Really enjoyed our time together today. Thank you for your contribution. Thanks for the great questions. Congratulations on all you've achieved. And I'm, uh, um, as well a friend, uh, friend, I'm really proud of the things you have achieved and you've done a fantastic job and provided such great guidance and leadership for, for women all around Australia and in other parts of the world as well. So thanks for your time today. I'm Mark Westcott. I'm Sarah Clark. And thanks for watching the Power of Breakfast.